All right, I've um, I've just gone over this sort of um, middle line that I added at the end of the last lesson, just with a little bit of uh, smoothing, just to sort of hide the scales that were showing through, because it's just adding um, uh, to the values that were on those pixels, which uh, included the the lines between the scales. So I just smoothed those out a little bit. Uh, now to um, smooth out this section. Um, it's actually taken out uh, a bit of our detail. So just to uh, give you some idea of how to perhaps get that de detail back in, um, if you, uh, you have your alpha here on the stitch tool, if you put the, um, the cursor right in the middle of where the center of the alpha um, is going to be, and this is also the way that I lined up the, um, the scales to be sort of alternating, if you put it right in the center of where you want the alpha to start from and then drag out, you'll notice that you get that sort of uh, that squared look there. And so that's a way to sort of bring that back in. In fact, I want that to be a little bit more um, there we go. And then I'll just go over that and smooth it just a little bit. Okay, and so there we go. Now just looking at the rest of this mesh, um, I can see uh, that we're getting a nice suggestion here of um, there being sort of um, tension here, almost like the skin is being taut a little bit sort of um, a little bit stretched across these gaps here, sort of like um, the way that skin acts between the um, the definition of muscles. So what I'm going to do is just come in with the standard brush and with a fairly low intensity I'm going to um, try and pick up on the the natural sort of the natural um, details that are coming out of the mesh and just sort of exaggerate those just a little bit. Now, a lot of this is fairly sort of tedious stuff and a lot of it um, doesn't need to be demonstrated entirely in, in each and every sort of minute of video. So if I do find that um, I've been spending a lot of time working on details that really you would know how to do, you're just sort of, uh, you're aware of the technique, you don't need to see it done over and over again. If it, if it gets to that stage, I'm just going to edit those sections out and you'll see a slight jump. So don't be alarmed, it just means that I'm assuming that you know how I did it. In fact, I might um, pause the video here, go through and add some detail in using this technique and um, just come back after I finish that. Okay, so we've um, got a little bit of work done here down the bottom and um, all I've been doing is uh, using the standard brush, I've been adding sort of geometry here and there and pressing the alt key to subtract to put a little bit of definition in the um, between the high and low areas and then holding the shift key to bring up the uh, the uh, smooth brush and then just sort of smoothing out the um, the ends and the um, where I want it to blend in with the uh, with the geometry that's there. And you can see how I've um, gone through and added these creases and folds into the um, into the geometry. If I press uh, the Alt key and tap, you can see that from a distance it's starting to look um, a lot like uh, some sort of biological uh, strained um, skin over some sort of uh, endoskeleton. 
and uh, so now it's just a question of uh, doing this to the uh, to the rest of the um, the object uh, which we can do sort of uh, between classes. One thing I will show you in this lesson is the uh, lazy mouse um, feature in ZBrush. Now um, the stitch tool you saw before can drag out a um, uh, a repeating pattern of uh, whatever your alpha is. Well, um, perhaps you don't want the uh, the repetition to be visible, and uh, but you'd like that sort of that level of control of being able to guide your stroke that way. And so one way to do that is um, if I just center up and zoom in is if we go up to stroke we can switch on something called lazy mouse. Now lazy mouse uh, makes uh, whatever brush you're using act in a very similar way to the way that the stitch brush worked and that is it draws out this this red line which is basically the guide of um, which way the um, the uh, the alpha is going to be traced behind. If I, if I increase the intensity here, you'll be able to see it a lot better. I can sort of drag it out and you can get very nice sort of smooth strokes that uh, would um, probably be a lot more difficult if you didn't have the lazy mouse option enabled. Um, so that's, uh, that's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, Look good at the start there. I kind of got a bit carried away. So uh, so yeah, the lazy mouse is uh, is a good way to um, to add those things, particularly if you are using a mouse and not a um, not a stylus or a um, uh, or a tablet. Um, the lazy mouse can give you similar effects to those um, to those items. Unfortunately. Um, uh, the tablet still gives you that sort of variation that you um, that you don't get uh, with the mouse. So you can start with a light stroke and then press harder to get a a deeper stroke. But um, unfortunately, with a mouse, you're pretty much stuck with uh, one pressure all the way through. That's why we keep our intensity levels down and add gradually, piece by piece. So. Um, so yeah, use the lazy mouse.